Hey ladies, recently one of you wrote in this question. Tiffany, I struggle a lot with self-confidence and comparing myself. I try not to, but whenever I go swimming or really anywhere else that I see super skinny girls, I wish I looked like them. How do you stop comparing yourself? This is actually a video I've been wanting to do for a long time, but I felt like unsure of what to say in it. I know this is something that has been a big part of my life since childhood. I've always kind of seen myself as how I compare to other people, like kind of how I rate compared to the other people around me. I start to feel like I had less value or worth because they were better than me. And the fact is like, there will always be someone who's a better wife, who's kinder, who's prettier. Like there's always gonna be those people. I always wanted to just stop comparing myself to people. And I don't know if that's always real realistic. We're always going to notice when someone's different than us or when they're really good at something. And I think we're meant to notice the differences because it's beautiful to have that variety and diversity in creation. But what we do with that comparison is what's important. And that's where a lot of us go into unhealthy places, including myself, of insecurity, feeling like we're not good enough, feeling badly about ourselves because of how we think we rate. And so I want to talk today about what do you do with comparison. And as we talk today, I would actually love to hear your favorite Bible verse when it comes to comparison, what is one verse that you run to, that you love to read to encourage you? If you could comment that below, I'd love to read them. I think the first thing I've been starting to learn, which is something my counselor has been working with me on, is that it shouldn't be either or, it should be both and. My idea of that rating scale of how I compared to other girls was an either or. So either she's the pretty one or I'm the pretty one. So if somebody else walked in a room and she was really gorgeous, I would feel like threatened and insecure and I'd feel like she's so pretty and I would no longer feel pretty at all. And so my counselor is showing me like, there's so many pretty people in the world. Like she can be pretty and you can be pretty at the same time. Time. It's not one or the other, it's both of you. Someone else's gift should not diminish your own. The second thing is to just take myself out of the game because comparison, it's almost like this game we play. Like I feel like us girls walk around and we notice like who's better at this, who's prettier. And it's almost like this ranking, like social caste system. And I just want to take myself out of the game. And I think a good way to do that is by complimenting other people. Like when you give compliments to somebody, it kind of says like, we're not in competition. And one way to kind of take yourself out of the game in your mind is to just simply acknowledge when a thought comes in that's comparison based. So I was talking to my counselor about this. And I'm like, so what do I do when I walk in a room and there's this gorgeous girl there and I start to feel like really insecure. And he was like, acknowledge the thought is there and just kind of laugh at it a little. Be like, oh, <laughs> it's you again. And then just move on. Like, don't try to fight it. Don't be like, no, I'm just as good. No, I'm just as good. Like, I would always fight it so much that I just would be so focused on that negative thought because I'm focused on fighting it. My counselor's like, instead, just kind of be like, oh, it's there. It came in my head. It might come in my head again. I'm moving on. So take yourself out of the game. So another thing I do is look at what it would cost me to have what that person has. So for example, let's say you know someone who's working really hard and has made a ton of money and you're like, man, I wish I had that kind of money. Well, think about the sacrifices it takes them to get there. So for example, maybe they're never home in the evenings. Maybe they're super stressed out. Maybe their health is even failing them because they're so stressed out by working so many long hours. This isn't always true when somebody makes a lot of money, but sometimes there are cases where when people seem super super successful, but the cost of that success is not something I want to pay. I don't want to give up my evenings with my husband. I don't want to give up the peace of mind and the health that I have to work harder so I can make more money. So I think sometimes it's easy to just compare on the surface what we see, like their car and their house and their clothes and be like, man, I wish I had that. But then you got to ask yourself, like, at what cost? What is the sacrifice it took for them to get there? And is that a sacrifice I would want to make? So another example of this, when I was growing up, my mom just like knew Bible verse for every situation. And I thought that was so cool and I wanted that. She put hours into studying God's word and memorizing scripture. And I was like, that's a huge cost, but I want that. That was a cost I was willing to pay. Another example is with the way people look. Sometimes it's easy for me to go to the beach and see these girls who look perfect. And then I have to like remind myself, like what's the cost they pay for this? There are some costs that I'm okay with paying and there are some that I'm not. I'm okay with going to the gym a few times a week. I think that's really good for your health. That's a worthwhile investment. I think eating mostly healthy food, a lot of fruits and veggies, that's worth the investment. But I'm not willing to put in an 
investment where I'm at the gym five hours a day every day. And I have some friends who do that. Like one of my friends just ran an Ironman. She's amazing. And that's totally where she is and God uses her in that place. But for me, I'm not willing to put that cost in. I love my ice cream too much. I love the things I do in the evenings when I could be working out too much. So when you're comparing yourself to someone and you want what they have, think about the sacrifices it took them to get there. And that can kind of help with the feelings of insecurity because you're like, well, you know what? I don't want to put that cost in. And so that's awesome that they have what they have, but I don't want it enough. My goal for myself is to be my best, not somebody else's best. And that doesn't mean I have to always be the best I can be 100%, but I try in general to develop the gifts that I have to the level that I can. So for a long time, I tried to make my singing voice sound like somebody else's because I thought that the style other people sing in was preferable to the kind of voice I have. And I remember trying to lead worship at places and try to set, get that sound. And it just sounded weird because it wasn't me. And so I think it's important to recognize what we have been given, the gifts we have, the talents we have, the way our body works, the shape of our body, all of that to recognize what we have. And it's okay to try to become all that we can be, but don't try to become what someone else is. Try to become who you are. Becoming your best, not the best or someone else's best, but your best. So a couple practical things you can do in those moments when you know you're gonna be tempted to feel really insecure and judging yourself based on how you rate, write yourself little notes to have with you in those moments. Maybe some scripture verses on them or get a devotional like his princess love letters from your king to just remind you of how God sees you and how loved you are. And afterwards, try to process those moments with someone you trust, maybe like a mentor or a close wise friend or a counselor. That's super helpful for me. When I go to counseling, I talk to my counselor about all those moments in the past few weeks when I felt super insecure and like I didn't measure up to the other people in the room. And we process that and figure out like, why am I feeling that way? What, where is this coming from? And we work through it together. And that has been so incredibly life-changingly helpful. Like even the amount of times I feel insecure and rating myself has dropped like this sharp drop. I'm not doing it as much because I'm able to work through where it's coming from, why I think I have to be as good as those other people and how I can know that I'm already loved and my husband loves me and my God loves me and I'm okay. And you know, even with our paths in life, it's easy to compare where we are on life's journey as opposed to somebody else. But the thing is, everybody's path is different. It goes up at different times and down at different times. And we all have ups and downs in life just at different points on our journey. And so if you're looking around and you're like, why is this person way up there right now? And I feel way down here. It doesn't mean there's something that you're doing wrong necessarily. Like as long as you're staying close to God, you're good. You're not missing out on anything. And so don't compare your path to somebody else's. You don't know what God's doing in them. And you don't always know what God's doing in you until later. And don't worry if you're not making as much money or you don't have as good of a job or you don't have a boyfriend or you don't know what God's will is for your life yet. It's okay. Stay close to God. Love him. Walk with him. You'll be okay. And you know, it's hard to be comfortable and confident in who we are in our culture, but your life can be a testimony to what it's like to rest in God's approval of you instead of striving for everyone else's approval or striving to feel like you're always the best. If our sense of identity is based on how we rate to other people, it'll never be stable because there will always be someone better than you in any given area. My identity can't be in that. It has to be in that the fact that God sees me, he knows me, he loves me, and I am accepted in the beloved, as Ephesians says. I am accepted by my Father God. So I hope that these things can help you as they've helped me. And don't forget to comment below your favorite Bible verse. When it comes to comparison, what Bible verse is a huge encouragement to you? I really want to hear what you say. And I can't wait to see you again Friday. Love you girls. Bye.